Welcome to the swirly, twirly forest, the North Carolina Zoo. Happy holidays, my friends. It's so good to see you. However you choose to celebrate, I hope we're having a wonderful holiday season. We decided to share with you, they keep calling us Steve's favorites. I don't know why I call it Steve's favorites. It's some of our favorite clips from the past year here in 2021 from the North Carolina Zoo. From me to you all, thank you so much for all your support, all your kind words, and always being here for us. I hope you really enjoy it. Megan, come on. We're gonna take a little quick walk and show you a couple trees. We're gonna end on our tree in a little bit. Before we get there, check out these episodes. He's a very smart boy. He's very that. engaged with keepers. He loves that this interaction. Trunk. Good boy, shimmy. Shake. Oh, that's so good. <laughs> Those are his fancy dance moves for the ladies. Fancy. Oh, well, you know, everybody has to have them. Shimmy shake. It's a it's a good thing I got married a long time ago. Because <laughs> I don't have those dance moves. You we were talking shimmy, about that earlier. You don't shimmy shake. I don't shimmy shake. I might shimmy break, but <laughs> I'm not shaking. Hey now this is one of my most one of my favorite behaviors that he okay. does. It's called a raspberry. So it's a vocalization. So if you guys shh Digital friends, shh. Lou, raspberries. <laughs> So I don't mean to interrupt. Steve. No, I think you're ready. No, no, but take a look at George over there sunbathing. Oh, you are kidding look me. Look at him. He is just like, look at me, Marie. Look at how good I look. That is ridiculously cute. George. <laughs> Digital guest, how about a heart or a, or a thumb up or something? Give me a wow. That is so cool. And again, we're here on Lemur Island. We are so lucky to be out on Lemur Island with George Marie and Keeper Jody. We can't thank them enough for letting us come out to share the lemurs with you. We've done it once before, and actually Keeper Jody was with us before. Um, but to be able to come out on the island, oh my goodness, what a unique experience. What an exciting day. Chelsea's like, nah, it's old hat. I don't, I don't need to do this. She almost said, nah, give it to somebody else. Right, Chelsea? I, I don't think so. I was like, Steve, make sure that I'm there because <laughs> this is super cool and something that I wouldn't normally be able to do. No, me either, Chelsea. Me either. So it looks like they're just enjoying the sun. They are. I Marie's enjoying the sun a little bit now, too. All right, let's see if they go to the right color. So, and so who, who's supposed to go to which color? The little guy's supposed to go to the red. They think they're gonna get it right. Sometimes they kind of follow each other. No, Wallace definitely looks like looked at Darwin. So it looks like maybe like, oh, I'm supposed to go over there, but then definitely turned and said, looked. It looked that process of I'm supposed to be going over here. Yeah, you can literally see Wallace thinking it through. Yeah. 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 Yep. Yeah. That's really neat. And it's the same process in a box in a box turtle in a galapagos tortoise as it was a seal um what, what other animals do you guys use this type of work with in uh, general um we have our rabbits that we will target train oh, cool. um we're working on a few of our lizards actually our blue really? tongue skink and then we have two uh newer lizards that we're going to try to target train as well we just got them so that's we're starting that process oh nice um our skunk stinker mm -hmm. she's target trained we have two oh we've met stinker before mm -hmm. We, we have, have what? Tin ricks, which are kind of like a relative to hedgehog. Not a lot of people know what they are yet. Ooh. Uh, do you think one day we can show our digital friends them some of this, some of these animals? <laughs> yeah, sure. definitely. Awesome. That's so great. So my question is, why? Why are we doing this? What's the purpose? I mean, they're they're not as big as sea lions. They probably are easier. We could just pick them up or anything like that if we really needed to. So why are we training them to do this stuff? Guess what? What? <laughs> One day, these guys will be bigger than sea lions. Oh! Oh! <laughs> I'm not sure how big sea lions um, are or how much they weigh, but 
they're gonna weigh like 500 pounds. These so, turtles are gonna these tortoises weigh 500 yes. pounds. So it's gonna be very hard to move them physically. So we figured we would go ahead and get them um, moving voluntarily and hopefully associating us with good things. So they'll hopefully follow us if we ever need them to move in the future. Uh, how much does a almost two year old in February rhino weigh, Jade? She is around 1400 pounds right now. Digital friends, this animal is 20 months old ish. How much again? 1,400 pounds. That sounds like she's putting on 100 pounds, 80 pounds-ish a month. Yep. And she's actually wow. slowed down. When they're oh, first born, they're about 80 pounds. Woo. And they do. They'll put on almost 100 pounds a month for the first year. 100 pounds a month. Look at that shot. That's a great shot, Leslie. Super job. Thank you for that. And meeting Jojo. Now, these are southern white rhinos, correct? They are. And they get their name because they're really a bright white color. Well, you know, our rhinos are really a bright red they color. They are a bright here red anyways. color. <laughs> so then they'd be the red rhinos. Oh. No, the white, actually, we think it's a misnomer. So the German word for white is bite, or the Dutch word. Okay. And when they were talking about the white rhinos, they were talking about the wide rhinos, like those oh. wide. Wide lipped oh, rhinos. I see. And you can see JoJo, she's got that big flat lip. Oh, great shot. Great and grass. Oh, so they're grazers. They're, they're grass grazers. eaters. Okay. And out of all the rhino species, they're the only grazing species. The only one? Only one. The others are browsers, so they get they more branches and leaves and mm -hmm. stuff. Oh, okay, and they cool. have little pointy prehensile lips. Pointy prehensile lips. I love that. That's so much cool. So when we got to Africa and we thought these were the white rhinos, we just kind of called the other ones the black rhinos. No kidding. All right. So a little bit of a misnomer named a lot more animals than we thought going in. So that, I think it's an amazing story. The idea that their lips are so wide. And I've heard their mouths can be a foot across. Probably. Yeah, I believe across. that. We'll see if we can get Linda to show us her big mouth right this? here. I do want this. I'm get out of your way. Moved all my treats around. <laughs> Come here, sweet pea. Linda. Oh, you want to show us yours? You still chewing. Can you do a baby open? Oh. oh. Good job. <laughs> Linda, you want to do a big open? Oh, your horn got in the way. Good job. <laughs> and that's a trained behavior, right? That is a trained behavior. So all of our rhinos, even the little ones, they start around two or three months mm -hmm. and they're part of voluntary health care. Wow, that is so neat. So we give them rewards every time they do something that helps us. And so what would the mouth help you with? That helps us with dental care. Oh, no kidding. So what we want to do, these guys don't have any incisors or canines. If you run your tongue over your teeth, uh -huh. those flat ones in front, the pointy ones, uh -huh. they don't have any of those. They just uh -uh. have the big flat ones in back. Oh. So when they chew all that grass all the time, those teeth get worn down. Gotcha. And they don't really have a toothbrush like we do. So we get <laughs> caught in the corners. No toothbrush. We do what we can. One more. Look at this big old mouth. Oh, Holy right cow. That is so fun. Well, look at this other interesting thing that they're doing over here, right? It's called sitting down. I know, like... but it's like backwards. Oh my goodness. Look at the light. Look at the knees. Those aren't knees. Oh, look at the knees. He's late. You bend down like that. The knees are. Steve. Chelsea, what are they then? Steve, you're fired. <laughs> no, 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 no. Digital friends, help me out here. Those are knees. Look where it is in the that's, body, yeah, Chelsea. That Come on. That doesn't make them knees. What do you think okay, they are? What are they? They're, so, I, I'm fun. My my boss at the other job. I was trying to explain it to him, and yep. he, he called them their pre ankles. <laughs> but pre ankles. But they're frankles. Frankles. <laughs> but so you're trying to say that's an ankle. Yes. They're, they are not their knees. Where are their knees? Okay, wait, wait. Can you show them this one up here standing up, Chelsea? Show them the one that's standing but that's up. that's like yeah. where our knees are. See, that's where, I, that's what I was going to say, Leslie. It's exactly what I was going to say. Look at that joint. That's where the knee is. Huh. But that's the ankle but you're saying. But those are pre-ankles. Those are prankles. So they stand <laughs> on their tippy toes? Sort of, yeah. Neat. So the one that's laying down again, that's kind of the foot, huh? Yeah, so... Um, you can't actually see our, their femur, which is like the top part of our oh, leg. Oh, nice. So their femur is up kind of in their feathers. It's in the huh. bottom. And then there's the another tire. joint that connects the femur to the, the bone that you can see that's kind of towards the top of their leg. So the knee and the hip are kind of up 
in the body? Yeah. In this in this shot? Yeah. Wow. Okay, here's my question, that's, Chelsea. That's crazy. Yeah, let's just so, Chelsea and her bird. So is that basically like, okay, there's the ankle, mm -hmm. and then the other part is like really long, and that's part of their foot, and then almost like the end is like, like our toes, or like, what is it? I'm so confused. Or is it just different, yeah, so, and it's not like us? So like we've got our... We've got our ankle, right? Right, and then we've got like the what we call kind of like the ball of our foot, like where our toes uh -huh. are. So kind of like up where their what looks like their knee is actually part of their ankle. Wow. Oh, okay. So their knee doesn't actually their leg doesn't actually bend backwards. That's just the foot that's bending like our ankle would. Yes. Yeah. That that's how. That's how our ankle. It does. So, if yeah. you look at it and you kind of break it down that way. Interesting. It's exactly. Very what it looks like. So one of the first steps we had when training with her was to get her to trust us. And by doing that, we just kind of offered her food and just for being in our presence and coming out around us, which was a huge step because she was a new animal here. And another, the next thing we did was getting her to be crate trained. Um, and we really wanted that to be solid because she is an education animal and she has to go in her crate a lot and she has to be comfortable in her crate. And she's going to show you how much she loves her crate. Get on. Oh, good girl. And so each time she goes in her crate, um, we always want it to be positive so that in the happenstance that something bad were to happen, that would kind of be a way we could catch her up if needed, or she's just really comfortable on long rides in a car in her crate. And then you come out. And another thing that we worked with Stinker on doing is a sort of a stationing behavior. Let me go around. <laughs> Where she holds and she presents her feet so that we can trim her nails. So uh, skunk nails grow really, really fast, but they do have a function of digging. So they're meant to be kind of long, but not super long. So her presenting them like this, we can actually trim them. And so that's just something that helps make her everyday husbandry a little easier so that we don't have to get the vets or somebody else to trim her nails, which would be kind of traumatic for her. So since we can do that in house, it helps us a lot with keeping her trust in us. Then you kennel again. Good girl. I will tell you, digital friends, Braveheart's my favorite. <laughs> Out of who? Braveheart is also my favorite. <laughs> oh, somebody had said... Oh, oh. That's okay. I also favoritism Braveheart. <laughs> <laughs> as an individual, yeah. as an individual, he's a lot of our favorite he's birds. the best boy bird we have. <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. I see what you did there. Okay, wait a minute. We only have two birds, and one's a bird, one's a male, one's female, April. Well so, done. So, well done. This is our only favorite male bird. Okay, all right, I get it, I get it. What did you have, Chelsea? All right, so for answers to your questions, yes. um, Aurora says drive carefully. Nice, Aurora. Yeah. Um, Corey Attention says uh, roadkill is probably what. Oh, the nice, Corey. Them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, keep your lights on from Rudy. Oh, okay. Um, That'll work. Thanks, Rudy. Keep, keep animals out of the streets. Keep animals out of the streets. Okay. Yeah. Um, clean road, kill off the road. A little, yeah, that's a, that's a great idea. That's all I've got at the moment. That, no, that's awesome. That's a great start, though. How about one other thing? I know you talk about this a lot in some of your programs, Leslie, and you and Chelsea do, too. This idea of littering. Right. So what? why is it important to not litter when you're talking about trying to save animals like hawks and owls. Right, because like, while yes, in theory, they're coming to the roadkill, we don't necessarily want you to be going out there and pulling all the mm, roadkill. Because then also that puts you in danger too. We don't want you to get hurt. So we do, we, you know, of course we love that you all love Those, <laughs> those are great ideas, great suggestions. Um, but 
Okay, so how we can do that instead of physically pulling, you know, if there is roadkill off, is doing everything that we can to keep the roads clean, okay. which is not like throwing food out the window. I know growing up, I was like, oh, oh it's an sure. apple core or like it's, something else is know, eat it's it. food. Something else is going to eat it. And yes, something else does eat it. Right. And it gets really, unless you have an amazing aim and you can throw really, really far, it's going to get close to the sides of the road. Those mice, those oh, other little those animals. animals are coming to eat that food. And then here comes the hawk. And then like April said, they get really focused. That's how they're able to hunt they have great eyesight and they get very focused. So they're not thinking, oh, this this thing's barreling down the road. Yeah, they don't see that. They're not focused. They're not seeing that. Exactly. Even though it's a huge vehicle, and we think, why didn't you see it? Well, I'm not, I'm not paying attention to the, mm -hmm. the mouse or the rat. The food is more important. Right. So that a makes lot perfect of times sense. They've probably not eaten several meals before True. then. So they could have missed their last oh. meal. So they're so focused on, like, I've really got to catch this one. And Nice. Yeah. yeah. Totally makes sense. Yeah, so that absolutely. apple core, that piece of a hot dog, that little right. last, last cracker is attracting other food right. to the road. Does that make sense? Well, yes, will decompose eventually and it's not super harmful to the world in the sense. Um, but to the it individual. Can, but it's the individual. It can bring other animals closer to the road, thus predators and other things. And then that's when that human and wildlife conflict happens. Ooh, very good. Fancy words. So it's all, all <laughs> this amazing stuff to, that you can do that it's kind of easy yeah. to do. Keep your trash in your car mm -hmm. until you get to a spot where you can throw it away safely. And that's something that can do to help Braveheart's relatives, mm -hmm. to help owls, to help little small kestrels, to help other animals. Digital friends, you have no idea how this works sometimes. This is a taped episode, of course. It's April 9th, and Chelsea was just trying to get us started a couple, three times on one of these. I kept saying, wait a minute, I'm not ready. <laughs> wait a minute, and Chelsea, three, two, okay. Steve, three, two, no, wait, hold. <laughs> So, You're fired. so Chelsea's being very, very patient until I got fired just now. I don't know how that happened. <laughs> Jonathan, Chelsea is sharing an orchid with our guests, yes. right? So this is an orchid? Yeah, this is Phalaenopsis. Phalaenopsis. This is your run-of-the-mill uh, you could find in uh, Lowe's Food and, and Lowe's uh, Hardware, the places like that. They're, really? They're the really popular uh, orchids out of all the orchids. Are they the kind of a popular. hardy plant? They, are they, they look like they're, can they, can they survive well? Not outside. They're, Ooh, in it, they're really? an indoor plant. They, they, indoor they plant. like it indoor. Not out here anyway. In North, in, in North Carolina weather, they can't sure, survive. That's a out. great point. Thank you very much. And this is an epiphyte, right? That's right. Yes. Grows out of a tree, benefits from the moisture of the tree, but does not hurt the tree. It doesn't have roots in the tree, it's right. kind of on the tree. If it hurt the tree, it'd be a parasite. So, so that's interesting. Is, uh -huh. So this is an epiphyte because it benefits and helps the tree. When you get an animal doing something like this, displaying those amazing colors, you have to share. Chelsea, you said you knew what kind of bird that was? It's a sun bittern. A sun bittern, huh? Yes. And that display is really important to them, and that's what it is. It's a display for a variety of reasons. Sometimes they can be doing that to cool off, sometimes to dry off, maybe sometimes to display to a female, or even to be threatening. And I think that's what this one's doing with us right now. Say, here I am. Look at those beautiful colors fell right into place. Again, when you're at the zoo, you really can't plan on what's going to happen. And you'll see that a couple times today in the episode on colors. This again, a sun bittern kind of displaying to us, to a female, or to the other birds in the area. Sun bittern. It's Keeper Sarah was kind enough to let Chelsea and I come up here and be at a different vantage point. I'm so excited. Chelsea, you've been here for before? I have not. This is exciting. Isn't it? I love it. And just for fun and giggles, today, taping it, is opening day for Major League Baseball. Is it? So I'm going to see also, your arm oh, here in a little okay. bit. And we'll see oh, your arm gosh. here in a little bit. I'm a little rusty. I didn't warm up. <laughs> you didn't warm up. Well said. <laughs> So what are you doing right now, Keeper Sarah? So what I'm doing is I'm giving the chimps a little bit of a snack, and this is a good way to kind of get eyes on everyone throughout the day. Oh, okay. Um, so we can make sure everyone's doing good, if there's been any spats, if 
everyone looks good if they've been fussing or yeah, kind of yeah. fighting a little bit. And okay. Also, just to see if, you know, everyone's kind of social relationships are still good. Nice. Okay. If there has been drama from the night before, it's good to see if they make up. <laughs> kind of like this. Or, yeah. <laughs> She or, you know, <laughs> Jonathan basically saying, I get all the treats. I don't want to share. So so there's kind of a plan when you're throwing the treats out. <laughs> there is for the most okay. part. Okay. Um, is basically just trying to keep Jonathan busy because he doesn't really necessarily <laughs> like to share. Okay. But he will share with his with his best buds, which is Sakoto, Lance, and Ruby. I see. And then he'll sometimes wow. share with Jari. How do you remember all this? Oh, it's it takes a, it takes a, it takes a minute because I bet the, you. we got a lot of chimps. Absolutely. But Gus is still very sorry. Gus is still very very young. Um, so Jonathan does not like sharing with Gus as much, and mm -hmm. neither does Jeannie apparently. <laughs> <laughs> Jonathan, he can have some. <laughs> oh my goodness. This is there so. There goes the kato. And then so our neat. least dominant animals are actually all the way over there on the hill. Oh wow! Can you get those, Chelsea? Can. They are up on top. They didn't even see them, I Sarah. Know. So that's Amy and her friend, Ebby. And then Amy's daughter, our uh, newest addition, our youngest, Miss Asha, who just Asha. turned one she in November. She just turned one in November. In November. Cow. And then that's Mr. So... Obi down there with Jari. He just turned two on March 18th. Yeah. So he just celebrated a birthday. What a catch. There's one right there. They have bright colors as well. This is the Panamanian golden frog. Believe it or not, extinct in the wild, guys. How crazy is that? But they've got that very distinct coloration, that gold color. But if you think that's cool, check this out. Let's see if we can find them over here. I scoped it out a minute. Oh, it's something. I scoped it out a second ago when I found one. Here's one over here. He's hunting. He's looking for food. He was a second ago. Now he's going to say, oh, here comes people. <laughs> so we're in the aviary. This is the pleasing dark frog. They come in a variety of colors. This is the green phase of the pleasing dark frog. How about some thumbs up for Chelsea on that shot, huh? And dark frogs are aposmatic. <coughs> Fancy science word. Fancy science word. They're aposmatic. That means that there's something about them in their cut. The word means there's something about them that makes them dangerous. Skunks are aposmatic. These guys are aposmatic. So what makes these guys dangerous is in their name. They're the poison dart frog. So the animals that they're eating, the poisons from that are transmitted into the animal, giving them that poisonous touch. You can't touch them. Another one of our animals here that have a very distinct color. How cool. Someone did answer. <gasps> okay. Oh, we did? Okay, awesome. awesome. So if you said millipede? You're 100% right. correct. Yeah, it's the kind of the cousin, the less, I would say, less scary cousin of the centipede. Um, Ooh, what type of difference? And, yeah. And yeah. so insects have six legs. That's one thing that makes an insect an insect. Yes. And so because of that, millipedes are not considered insects. Nope. They are in their own little group and family. Yeah. Um, so many. With feet. centipedes, though. And I know, I love to watch them walk. Let's. I'm going to see if we could put it down on the table and see if we can watch it walk. It's so much fun to watch. And you mentioned the centipede, Leslie. Centipedes, if I'm not mistaken, are a little flatter. Tend to be, yeah. Yeah. More and they flat. Have just two legs. Two legs per body, per body segment. segment. And then their legs actually kind of tend to poke out from the sides, which is also because they're flatter, that's what happens. Like a little wave. It is like a little wave, I agree. And so it's really relaxing to watch now he's going towards the end, so I'm going to turn him around, see if I can get to walk this way. Yeah, perfect. Um, it's going to go towards the edge again. But <laughs> So what should our guests know about lemurs that we haven't mentioned yet? Well, other than they're super cool stuff. Well, they are super cool. Man. I like the female dominate. That's really neat. That's mm -hmm. unique. I love, the, I love the frugivore, the fruit diet, sharp teeth. I know a fun fact, Steve. What you got? 
Did you know that these are one of the largest pollinators? Wait, 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 wait. Lemurs? No, honeybees are pollinators. Yeah, baby. exactly. But red ruffed lemurs are pollinators as well. Really? How, and, how, is, how are these guys pollinators? What you guys need to do at home is Google images of red ruffed lemurs mm -hmm. and flowers. Red and rough lemurs and you flowers. You will see pictures of lemurs with pollen all over their little faces oh, because no they kidding. will oftentimes eat the nectar out of flowers. Okay. And while they're doing that, they're pollinating other flowers. Nice. Just like the honeybee. Exactly. Wow. Just a little bit larger. A couple, just a little bit larger. Mm -hmm. um, so neat. And what about, I'm going to make a little, assumpt a little assessment, a little um, assumption here in that they can, I know it's 1030 for digital friends. They're going to be a little bit put off by this one, but that's okay. They'll, it's a learning moment. Okay. They poop seeds. They do. They do they poop do. seeds. They do. Uh-huh. They poop seeds. How cool is that, right? Right. Digital friends, they poop seeds. Yes. I won't say it again. Now that Just is for you. <laughs> one reason why they are so important, especially with the way the, they're losing their forests in yes. Madagascar. I was going to say that's so. one of the biggest challenges with them is the fact that their habitat, their forests are going away. Mm -hmm. um, and if you lose an animal like the lemur, as Jody just mentioned, pollination ha stops happening and then seed dispersal also stops happening. So mm -hmm. it's not just that we're losing the trees. <laughs> see George over there. How do you guys get any work done, Jody? I know, right? They're amazing. <laughs> And now we're supposed to be looking at, I think it's an alligator snapping turtle. I don't know. You don't have to tape right now, Chelsea, because but Steph's not here yet. I'm, I'm taping the animal, Steve. There's, no, because no, let Steph get here and Steph will show us where the animal is. Because I don't see, I don't see where Max, I think his name is Max, where the alligator snapping turtle is. So let, oh, here comes Stephanie now. Steph, come on in. Everybody say hi to Keeper Steph. This is Keeper Steph. Hey guys. So as we told you, we're talking about aquatics and how to care for aquatics. And we thought, what a great opportunity to meet one of our big aquatic animals, not like the gators, but yeah. alligator snapping turtle. And Chelsea said she thought she saw the animal in here, but I don't think she really did. Yeah. Can you show us where the snapping turtle is? Yep, so if you look down there through the glass, you can see him, he's facing away from us right now, but you can see his tail kind of down there on the bottom of the exhibit. Chelsea, is that what you were? Uh, yes, Steve. That's really what the you were The giant rock with a tail. <laughs> the giant rock with a tail is a snapping turtle? That, that and that's what you were getting? That is exactly what I was getting. Yep, he's hanging out oh, right, underneath, right underneath that log that we put in there for And him. that's really him. He's under the water because I haven't seen him. That's why I thought Chelsea was <laughs> filming a rock. Yep, he's really in there. He's not moving wow. around a whole lot right now just because of the temperature of the water. But. Oh, really? So yeah. because it's a little colder outside, he's going to be, he won't be as, he won't be as state, won't be as mobile as he might be otherwise? Correct. Yeah, so um, he is a reptile. So he is um, oh, considered sure. a cold-blooded animal Yep. Um, or an ectotherm. Ectotherm. Um, and what that means is that he is not able to, internally regulate his own body heat. So oh, he, has like to depend, yeah, cool. he has to depend on it from um, getting it from the environment. I so. see. All right, Keeper, Steph, tell us a little bit about Max. Sure. What can you tell us about Max? Max is expected to be right around 120 years old. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> 120? Yeah. I'm not even that old. Yeah, so he, yeah, their lifespan wow. can range any, anywhere on average from 50 to 100 years. And obviously, in Max's case, they can surpass that. No kidding. Yeah. That's awesome. And you said he eats a couple times, a couple types of fish. Mm -hmm. he, we feed him herring and trout. And oh, we, trout. Wow. Again, yeah, we only feed that to him um, in the summertime. Okay, yep, 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 yep. Yeah. yeah. And... I don't know if, I, this is, if it's a fair question. I don't know how often you weigh him. Do you have any idea what he might weigh? Yeah, so last time we weighed him, he was right around 135 pounds. 135 yeah. pounds? Yeah. Really? Yeah. So the average weight on these guys, it really depends on whether it's a male or female. The males can be anywhere from 150 to 200 pounds. So he's not even... He's, he's, he's a good size yeah. snapper, but, but he's not max. Yeah. Wow, as far yeah. as size goes, as far as name maybe, but not size. Yeah, and then the females, they average right around 50 pounds, so they're much smaller. Wow. Size. How was that, digital friends? North Carolina Zoo, to you? This is the Conservation Education and Science Holiday Tree. <laughs> Came in second place to graphics. Theirs was really pretty. <laughs> but our tree is all about recycle and reuse and upcycle. Um, look at this, it's a little bow. This is a, looks like it was probably some potato chips. Uh, made a little ornament out of a bottle caps. Um, I love this one. 
uh, tennis balls maybe from enrichment they were using and didn't want to use anymore. Turned um, into a Santa spider. Turned into a Santa spider. <laughs> um, a a, a, a spongy uh, SpongeBob. <laughs> SpongeBob. Come around behind you. <laughs> Um, Megan, if I'm mistaken, you did this one, right? Is that one of the ones you did? Yes. That's a Megan tree. <laughs> I did these. This is icicles out of bottle caps. And these came on packages. Little icicles or tinsel. So, I lo oh, look at the wine cork garland down here. I saw something really neat. Where'd it go? Is that? No, it's right in here. I'm going to come behind you again. It was so much fun to create this, and the entire CES team created. Everybody contributed. Isn't that cool? Did that. I love this one, too. This is kind of cool. Old computer board. Oh, yeah. Isn't that neat? And so many, I mean, there's so many things to choose from, but things you can think about when you decide next for next season, if you're going to decorate a holiday tree of some sort, what can you do to make some of the ornaments? So much fun. We should have brought our gift card. We would. CES, do you have it? I think I do. Let's see if you got it. Say what we won for coming in second place. Yay! Oh, she does have it. Thank you, Megan. I am about to use it. Look what we won. <laughs> Ta da! Hot cocoa or hot beverage. Probably cocoa. Yeah. Cider, tea. Mm hmm. But voila for CES, Conservation Education <laughs> Science. I truly hope you enjoyed the episode, all about some really different kind of clips, something we haven't done before. Thought I'd give it a shot. Did you enjoy it? I hope so. I know we enjoyed bringing it to you every Wednesday at 10 o'clock. And we're gonna continue into 2022. Hope to see you there. Stay safe, everybody. Hope to see you in 2022, virtually, and maybe at the zoo. <laughs>